So, I'll admit it. I will say it loud to the world. I did not see Andor when it first came out. And when this show was announced way back when, I was less than thrilled to say the least. Sure, I was excited and I wanted to see what it was up, but I wasn't really trying to go out of my way to watch this show. And when it came out to Disney+, Plus, I, again, didn't watch the premiere. I was kind of busy when it dropped and I just never really got around to it. Plus, I will admit, the negative comments about the show did kind of start to get to me. Having not really been initially excited for it myself and not really seeing it and then hearing how boring people said it was, I wasn't really the most thrilled or pushed to go watch it. But I had a spare hour before one of my classes and decided to sit down and see episode one. And then I liked it. So it led into episode two and then three and so on and so forth all the way up to where I just caught up with episode seven. And what I have to say is, my God, Star Wars fans could have not been more wrong about this show. Every comment or negative review I've seen about this show saying that Andor is boring or it's a snooze fest and there's nothing going on in the show, look, I'm sorry, but that's just objectively not correct or just wrong about this show. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and yell at you for not liking the show. Obviously, you are 100% entitled to your own opinion and your own taste. The show's not for everybody. It's just like Clone Wars and Rebels and the prequels and the sequels and the EU and so on and so forth. It's not for everybody. And I understand that. You are entitled to like what you want to like and I'm not going to force you to like it. But saying something like it's boring or it's a filler show or there's nothing going on is just a straight lie. It's okay to not like it, but you can't just be dishonest about that. And I encourage anybody who was bored by the show to kind of give it another try. If you couldn't get into it at first, I think you should give it just another try. Just watch two or three more episodes and just what makes it such a good show. Now, is it the best Star Wars show or piece of media ever? No, I'm not going to lie to you. It's amazing, but that's an impossible feature to give anything because again, everyone's tastes are different. What I say is the best might be different from yours and everyone's entitled to that. I'm not going to try to sit here and say it's the best when it's good, sure, but it's not the best. Is it the best modern Star Wars? Well, again, that's not really a fair ranking. It depends on your taste. But objectively, no. However, I can't speak for anyone. If this is your favorite Star Wars piece of media, then more power to you, that's great. I totally see why, and I'll defend you for it. But what I will say about the show is that it managed to take a character that I personally had little to no interest in whatsoever, that of which being, of course, Cassian, and make him one of my favorite characters to see on screen. And watching Rogue One after Andor, I've been doing that, I watched Rogue One after I finished Episode 7, it makes me appreciate Cassian so much more. The amount of development and character that they've managed to put into this guy is insane, and it's all done in such a natural way. You're not forced into thinking or believing anything. They never force you to feel or change how you feel anything. It's all natural and it's all progressive and that's how character development should be. It takes a character that we don't know much about and turns him into a genuine character we can get behind. They allow you to take a side seat in Cassian's story and watch his story slowly. We begin to understand him more as a three-dimensional real character. Now I would love to make a more in-depth video about Cassian himself and that goes for all the characters in the show because the characters are so well done. And if you don't like characters, that may be why you don't get into the show. Is If you're only here for the action, that's fine. I'm not going to wrap you for it. But the show is really character driven. And I think that's the reason why people say it's boring is because the development is behind those characters. Like I said, I want to go more into depth about Cassian's character. But as of posting this today, we're only on episode 8. So I think I'm going to wait on that. I think I want a little bit more before I dive higher into an analysis on Cassian. But expect that video because I will make it. Because God, I love this character now. I can't explain how much I love this character now. Look at those ads. Yeah. Look at those pegs. Uh. She's like the Roman deity of sex. What? That body brings grown men to their knees. But there are just a few points I want to talk about really quickly that show why this show is so great and doing what it's doing so well. The first point obviously being Cassian. Taking Cassian and turning him into a more interesting character. For us to watch someone who i'm genuinely waiting every single week to see what's going to happen next in his story because i'm that invested in who he is and his character and keep in mind this was just like a semi a semi lead or half lead or co-lead in rogue one that we didn't see much of 
So the development that they've done to this character is insane. So I implore you that if you were avoiding Andor for a similar reason like I was, that you couldn't really understand why Cassian, of all people, would get a show. Like the Roman deity of sex. And you didn't know why he got a show? Brings grown men to their knees. That was my reason why I avoided it, because I didn't know why, of all people, you'd pick him. I encourage you to give it another try. I gave it a try, and I'm so glad I did was not disappointed with what I saw, and I'm so excited to see where they go. So, a big complaint with this show already is that there's not enough action, and that there's too much talking and not enough explosions, because apparently, explosions are what make or break good Star Wars at this point, and that's, I don't need to say it, that's kinda sad. But neither of these are really bad things, and not to mention, they're both incredibly incorrect. Sure, there's a little bit more conversational scenes, and with less action than opposed to most shows, but there's also plenty of action and shooting and explosions, so if you're here for the action and you were staying away for that criticism, I can tell you it's false and it's unfair. If you're here for action and you want action, this show delivers, and you can find that action in almost every episode. But the reason the action is so good is because of the characters behind it, and the show doesn't shy away from asking for those more conversational scenes over the action. And doing so allows us to actually get to know these characters within these scenes, whether it's conversational or action, we see them as real characters, as rather than just these side faces in a Star Wars universe. We actually see them as real people, flawed characters, not just lines on a script or a cameo in the back of a camera scene. Everyone in the show feels so real. Tell that everybody has their own life, their own backstory, their own thousand page Wikipedia article on them, and they could all warrant their own spin-off. But the reason I say that is these characters are so interesting to the point where they could warrant their own story, that would be interesting to watch. Spend time getting to actually see these characters and who they are. Not just our main characters, but our side characters we spend time with. How they act, how they feel, how they respond to things, their faults and their feelings, and their own individual actions. We get to see everything. Characters that would normally be write-offs or we would only see for a few seconds, given so much depth in a matter of a few scenes and lines. And it's not that common we get something like that. A few that come to mind are obviously Cyril Karn, Bix, Tim, Sheen, Terraman, and Cynthia, and even Cassian's droid B. All of these characters have such depth to them, and the side characters have so much depth that's just really intricately crafted within the story and makes sense. They're given so much depth and story within what is just said and done by them, or of them, or around them, how the story reacts around them, not just how they play into the story, or simply just how they act and respond in certain scenes. By the way, props to all of these actors for bringing these characters to life in such believable and layered ways. In this show, the characters matter a lot more than the plot does, and in turn, that makes us actually care about the plot so much more. Now, when I say they matter more than the plot, that doesn't mean the plot is bad. What I mean is that the show kind of sidelines the plot as something that just happens to our characters while focusing more on a character-driven story. Think of it as we're watching two different characters, one we know and one we don't, and one we don't doing the same mission. We're going to be more invested in the one we know, not the one we don't, even though they're doing the same thing. That's what this show does, is it gets us to know and like our characters, even the unlikable ones we understand, and follows their story through those developments. Again, I want to go more into depth about each of these characters a little bit later on, but I want to let the show kind of play out to get a little bit more about these characters and see what I'm looking at. But it does a really good job regarding the characters in terms of story, writing, and acting, and really makes us care about who they are and how they play into this universe. I think it's a common misconception that it's mistaken world building for being boring or being pointless when it really goes to show length and build out a Star Wars universe. World building in recent Star Wars media has been absolutely phenomenal, and I think the most notable being The Mandalorian, as it introduces us to a new side of Star Wars and dives us really deep into the lore behind everything and shows us something we've never really seen before. And dare I say, it does a better job than Mando does in terms of world building and development, where it lacks in the action it makes up for in the world and the story that everything takes place in. And when I say world building, I mean that Andor really does it like no other. Everything on screen was put there for a reason. Everything has a purpose. And a lot of the purposes are shown to us, but the beauty of it is that they're not glorified. They're treated as they're not anything special, as if they're just normal, mundane things that would be happening in the Star Wars universe to a random Star Wars citizen. Everything makes sense 
but we're not shown why. And it's treated as normal, and it makes us relate to that. Droid at Cassian's house has a charger. He needs to stay on the charger when he's not in use, so he doesn't run out of charge when he's being used. So why would he need a charger, you may ask? We've seen droids before, and no other droid has ever needed one. Well, no, but every droid we've seen in Star Wars, from 3PO to R2 to K2, they have a power supply. And we know this because they're an electronic droid. We know this in the back of our head. It's not told to us. We know they have a power supply we can assume that's not everlasting. They need to charge that power supply when it's not in use. But since that's classified as a normal or boring thing, just like in our world, charging our phone is not glorified, it's never shown. But Andor goes out of its way to show us these things. Not putting too much attention on it, it's just another normal day. The droid is on his charger, but we see it happen and it makes sense. That's not boring, that's world building. That builds up in the back of our head that we now know droids have power supplies that need to be charged. And again, if you're only here for the action, you're not really going to find likeness in something like that. And I understand, I'm not ripping on you for that. I'm just saying, you can't say that's boring when it genuinely makes sense and goes to build the world more. Even more things, like the Imperial data pads they carry, the credit depot, or the hovering pallet jacks within the credit depot. The comm devices that every character carries, and how they're different, how they move, how they act, how each char character has a different sort of gadget. The town, the way that it's set up, the doors, the walls, the cereal bowls and the containers, the blue milk, the cups, the everything. Everything has a purpose, but it's not told to us. It's shown to us and it's left up to us as the viewer to interpret, with our prior knowledge of Star Wars, what the purpose is. That's not boring, that's world building. They treat everything as if it's normal, and that goes so far into building the world and the characters, it makes everything so tangible. It makes everything seem to the viewer that we can figure it out, that this gives us a sense of involvement in the story, and it almost convinces us that this universe would exist whether or not we were watching it. Whether or not there were thousands, millions of fans who lord about this stuff for hours. If we didn't exist, this universe still would. That's what this is doing, and it's beautiful. And it plays back into the original trilogy, specifically episode 4 on Moss Eisley in the cantina. And more or less the entire story, where Lucas strived to create a very lived-in space universe. It's not a utopia, it's not a perfect place, and it's in the future, sure, but it's not futuristic. It's a lived-in, real world, but it's out of our world. There's so much detail and depth behind everything that there's probably things in these scenes and these sets that aren't even touched, but are have hours spent making and meticulously placing them into the scene for a purpose, just to make it seem as if it has a purpose, to make us to show us that this is the real world, not a set, but a real room. And when you have a story that focuses on those two things, the character development and the world building, it makes everything that you're watching so much more interesting because you can actually follow along. You actually feel as if you're a part of this story because you understand, you have the insider knowledge. And it doesn't tell it to you, it shows it to you and allows you to use your brain and figure everything out. And that's amazing. A good analogy I want to give for this is if anybody's ever played Call of Duty Zombies, in Black Ops 2, Mob of the Dead is a map that is completely off of any storyline. It is its own thing and it has no relation to any other storyline. Not the characters we know, it's its own thing. And it's not explained to us. Nothing's explained to us. We're just on an island as four mobsters who we've never seen before. Nothing's explained. It's all shown to us and we are allowed to build the story in our head until we figure out what's going on. And that's that serves to be one of the greatest maps of all time and one of the greatest stories of all time because of that. Because of that world building, it does than just a map. That's what this show is doing. It doesn't tell you everything. And it's not a chore to do that. It's actually a benefit to do that because it gives you that insider knowledge. And it gives you kind of like, hey, I understand that. Obviously, this isn't a spoiler because we all know Cassian as the captain or a captain of the Rebellion from Rogue One. But the Rebellion and the Empire are part of the story. They both play very crucial roles in the story, but what I want to focus on is how they're portrayed. We see a very interesting way of showcasing both of these sides, and while we've always been led to believe it's a very black and white war, the Rebels are the good guys and the Empire are the bad guys, this show goes to show us that there's a little bit of gray in between, and not everything is as one-sided or the other as we might think it is. They go to show us that not all good guys are good, and not all bad guys are bad. 
Everyone is their own character with their own morals, own beliefs, and their own drives for doing what they do. It dives into depth about these sides and showing us the flaws of both sides. Flaws of the Rebellion and its Rebels, and flaws of the Empire with its opposites. Characters are very human. They're not just written out as a character, they're portrayed as a real person. Made out not again just to be lines on a page, but real people with real feelings and real goals and real flaws. They're flawed characters for a reason. Now, I don't want to say too much, as I genuinely encourage you to go check out the show for yourself to kind of see what I mean. You'll you'll understand what I mean if you just give it another shot. But we're given almost a new pair of eyes to look at these sides through, look at this story through, and realize that it's not as black and white as we were initially told it was. Also, side note, the show does such a good job of showing the sheer power and fear that the Empire conveys throughout the galaxy. We've always known the Empire was strong. That was just a fact. They were the galactic military at that time. But we never get to see how strong they are, and we never get to see the fear that they induce unless it's done th done so through Vader. Did I just try to itch my head to a helmet? That was stupid. We never get to see how strong just the normal militia is. A single TIE fighter is able to terrify an entire village. We're given the perspective where that single TIE fighter invokes so much fear to scare away an entire group of people. And keep in mind, these TIE fighters are what we used to think were scrap metal. They used to be blown up like nothing. But seeing that blown up like nothing into a sheer power position shows us what position these people are in and what position the Empire has over them. It doesn't only show us the power of the Empire, but the hold that they have on the galaxy. And that is brilliant. It also shows the struggle of the Rebellion having to face something like that. The atmosphere of the show is done very well, and it gives you a constant feeling throughout, while also changing up the tone every now and then. A feeling of always being on edge, always having to watch your back and look over your shoulder, just like our main characters have to, because we never know what's going to happen. We have to watch over, over our shoulder just like Cassian does in the entire show, just like every character does. Again, I won't spoil anything, but multiple times throughout this show already, there's a scene where you think that something will happen, and you think you know how it's going to play out because it's a cliche, but they completely 180 it and something else happens you never could have thought. Or the contrast of you think that, oh, there's no way they're going to do something like that, and they do it. Something like that isn't something a normal show can do. Only a show that has, wait for it, character development and world building built into the backbone of the show can do something like that. That's why they're so effective is because we care so much about what's happening on screen. Again, I'm not going to reveal any details, just go watch it. The show does a very good job of putting us in the shoes of somebody who lives in this universe, giving us the feeling of almost dreary loss and hopelessness that anyone against the Empire would feel. The same feeling that our characters would feel, while also managing to keep that little sliver of hope and excitement of what's to come hinting at the excitement of the rebellion that is just now blossoming and starting. Not only that, but each section of the story kind of has its own specific atmosphere or tone. Every little side quest we follow has its own kind of set of rules or tones that it follows, and it makes sense thematically. That scene in a story makes you feel and think a certain way, while the Imperial Officer story makes you feel and think another certain way. The camp crew and the flashback, or the Coruscant scenes, or the scenes with Cyril. All of them convey their own feeling, their own tone, and warrant their own backstories, as if, like I said, we could watch an entire one hour episode about each of these stories, but they're cut between to give us that cohesion. We're given the feeling, again, that these stories continue without us watching, that they're happening now, they're happening without us involving them. They feel real, they feel human, and they feel genuine. And that's due to the diverse tone settings around the show, reminding us of the real world that they are in. It also reminds us of our own real world, like every situation we're in, whether it's work, school, home, the gym, the store, out in public with friends, whatever, we feel and act differently in all of those. This show kind of mimics that by giving each and every storyline its own aspect and atmosphere, evolving around that while also remaining consistent to its own story. And lastly, again, I'm going to go into him later, but I want to talk about Cassian really quickly. I can't express how much I enjoy Cassian's character now and how surprised I personally am that I do enjoy his character so much. Again, when the show was announced that Cassian Andor of Rogue One was getting his own story, I was one of the guys who was like, really? Of all people, you're going to choose Cassian. Why not anybody else? I was that guy. 
But after watching this, I'm so glad they chose him over everybody else because he has so much potential. They kill it at showing us that potential. It is amazing. I love every little bit about what his story is. The dude went from just kind of a cool character who we saw in Rogue One to an absolute badass who we believe can pull off all of the stuff he does. He's not perfect, he's flawed, but the things he's good at, we know he's good at because we're given reason to believe that. His flaws, again, we're given reason to believe why he has those flaws. It's believable, he's a human character, nothing is overdone. And by the way, when I say human, I don't mean like their species are all humans, but it's Star Wars. I mean as if they're relatable, they're not a, a 2D character we just kind of pass off, they're real people. We get to learn more about him and who he is, and like I said, when I finished episode 7, I went to watch Rogue One just because I was I was working on homework and I wanted to watch Rogue One. And watching Rogue One after Cassian or after Andor really gives you a new appreciation for that show and everything it stands for. You see the movie through a whole new set of eyes. And I can't express how cool it is to watch Rogue One after Andor and just I just just go do it. Like <laughs> I implore you to go do that. It's so cool. And if you like Rogue One, you'll love Andor. Just give it a shot. So obviously, I'm not going to force you to watch Andor if you don't want to, or if you do give it another try and you're just not into it, that's fine. I'm not going to be the guy who's forcing you to watch it. Whatever. Everyone has their own opinion. Every show has its own tastes. And look, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But I do just want to encourage you that if you were kind of swayed away by the criticisms and you didn't watch it because of the criticisms, I, I think just watch it with your own eyes. Just go in there and Give it a try. Give it a shot. And if you didn't like it at first and you only got through like one episode, just give like two or three more a try. Just give it a little time to kick in. Because I swear, if it hits with you, it hits. And it's so cool. Again, I was one of those guys who was very skeptical about this show. And it's now one of my favorite things to watch. I'm so excited for the new episode tomorrow. Or today. As of posting this. But yeah, that's all I gotta say. If you haven't seen Andor, I highly encourage you to go give it a try. If it's not for you, it's not for you, whatever. But just go give it a try. That's all I gotta say. Thanks for watching again, and peace.